All right, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Um, I'm gonna try and keep this one kind of organized. You'll see it's a little bit different maybe than some of my other videos, or at least I'm hoping it will be. Um, I kind of have a plan for how I wanna film this video while I'm filming it here, but we'll see how it goes in the editing process. But first I wanna talk about and give my thoughts on Daniel Medvedev, which first and foremost, congratulations to him for winning the US Open this year. Of course, he beat my favorite player, Novak Djokovic, but I respect all tennis players. And then I just want to give my thoughts, as the title says, on the current state of the ATP Tour and how it will be going forward. Just my thoughts from one man's opinion. Um, we'll start off with Daniel Medvedev. So the way I see things for him at the moment is he's the player to beat, right? Um, coming from a coach's perspective and one who just look at looks at these guys' games, um, He's a little bit taller than Novak, which um, even I thought, but a lot of my friends thought he was much bigger than Novak, and at least from when they were standing next to each other, I don't know his exact height off the top of my head, but um, he was only a little bit taller than Novak. I was thinking he was a much bigger guy, but um, we we have to at least give some um, sort of discussion to, and I'm sorry, I got vaccinated yesterday, so my arm is a little bit sore. That You'll see me switching arms kind of frequently, but... Um, Taller guys, you know, no more, we're no longer in the times where the taller guys kind of struggle against those that can move, because a lot of these tall guys can also move. Uh, Daniel Medvedev is a perfect example of that. The way I've kind of been explaining it in my videos is everyone wants to play like Novak Djokovic. Um, a, a prime example of that, in my opinion, was Marin Cilic, or Cilic, I don't know how he pronounces it, but... Um, a guy who is 6'6", you know, much bigger than Novak, and Novak plays like the small man's game. He he just gets every ball back, he's super consistent, especially now in my opinion. Um, there's been a debate, which I've talked about before in a previous video, between Novak Djokovic 2011 and 2015, and thankfully at least with the friends that I have in the small community that I'm trying to build here, um, helping people to be able to realize that there was a huge difference in the way Novak played pre-2011, really pre-2012, uh, before he went away from the UTEC IG racket, which of course was not that exact racket, it was whatever mold he actually uses. Um, but starting in 2013, really the end of 2012, of course, that's when he started something new with a new technology in his, in his racket and new whatever uh, that we may never know about, but just the way he started playing after 2012, um, it was completely different, right? He um, I just liked his aggression, his 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 energy from the court, and the way he played a more of a baseline aggressive game uh, before 2011, and especially throughout the year of 2011 and 2012, really. But if you look at matches in 2011 or 2012, like the way he played Rafa and Roger, it's completely different than how he played them in 2014 or 2015, for instance. And I personally prefer the Novak of 2011 or 2012. Now coming back to what I was talking about as I of course got off topic, um, the taller guys, you know, it's not like how it used to be where you could just think bring them up to the net and hit it low and they won't be able to get it back or just keep moving them and they just won't be able to move like how a Novak does. His defense is ridiculous and you have to give it to someone like Daniel Medvedev. He looks like he, he out djokovic -ed. Djokovic, that's what now some of the commentators would say, as a lot of people are realizing that that's pretty much like a Novak sort of game that these big guys can play, and um, that's that's dangerous, right? Daniel Medvedev quite easily handled, as a lot of people are saying, Novak Djokovic in this final, and I think it was bad, but it wasn't all that bad. Um, the way I sort of realize or assess this match was Novak just didn't show up which is why I think he was so emotional. He was so emotional, of course, as he said, this was really the first time he ever got support like that from the U.S. from the United uh, U.S. crowd, if I can speak English, American crowd. Um, I was really, of course, disheartened as a Novak fan to see him lose this one, but he just really didn't show up. He, his serve was the main thing that got him points, in my opinion, not his baseline game, which I don't think he should want to or should have to rely on his baseline game. But if his game is based on just being solid, waiting for the opportunity, you got to give it to someone like Daniel Medvedev. I, I got to think he's more consistent and he's just better from the baseline at this point. He plays so far back yet still gets most drop shots. I was just watching the match between Daniel Medvedev and Rafa Nadal in 2019 and 
And right now, Daniel Medvedev is just, you know, he's he's figured it out. And I, I hate to see it myself because I just don't know how Novak's going to recover from it to be able to beat him, of course, as a Novak fan. But I think that he will. So, finishing off, giving my thoughts on Daniel Medvedev. Um, I don't know how things are going to go. Like, as we're leading up into the next part, talking about the full tour. Um, he's just, I don't know what it's going to take to be able to beat him. I know what it takes. Like, just looking at his game, like how Rafa beat him at that U.S. Open final. And obviously, I think he's number two in the world. Um, being up at the top always brings about more pressure. He'll be the favorite in a lot of events, especially going into next year. I'm just thinking, who is going to stop this guy? Um, I think that with the pressure, you know, he's he's not as solid as someone like Novak. He's very solid, but mentally he doesn't have the experience. Um and his game has, in, in my opinion, as everyone's game has some flaws, but he stands so far behind the baseline, which leaves him vulnerable, and his strokes just aren't, to me, as solid as someone like Novak Djokovic, um, even though he does play just like Novak Djokovic and obviously beat him in this last match. But moving on to the rest of the tour, so we've got guys like Sissy Paz, uh, who's been playing pretty well recently. Uh, Zverev, obviously, is on this whole new front, which... You know, I, I don't, I didn't title this way, but I'm just not a fan of the next gen of tennis. Um, I'm a, you know, like, uh, I, I enjoyed the game back how it was played in like 2011, 2010, and whatnot. Um, now, all these guys, in my opinion, just play the same as I've been saying in my previous videos on the guy's side. They all just have great ground strokes, and it's really just a matter of who's better on the day. Um, you know, it's just, it's a different game in my opinion right now, the way that these guys are playing. And I think that Djokovic, Federer, and Nadal really up the level of the game that it takes to be able to play, which is why I think that to me, my perspective is that they all kind of play the same. It just looks like the same game from all of them. So I'm just not a big fan of any of them, like Zverev or, uh, you know, Sissipas or any of these guys. I mean, I certainly am a fan of the game, so I admire what they're doing and I'm just a fan of tennis. But... I don't know. It's like it's hard for me to sometimes watch like a match between a Medvedev and a Sissy Pass or something like that. I enjoy just seeing good tennis, but it's not the same game as you know seeing like the older matches back in the old days. So going forward, I think that we will see these guys kind of bounce around between trying to take that top level because, as I was just talking about Zverev, it's just crazy to me to think that they're they were giving him so much credit, really thinking he was going to beat Novak. Which, in my opinion, a, a younger Novak would have never have lost to someone like Zverev. It's just that's that's just where I come from with my thoughts. Like a 2011 Novak, it would not be a match. It would be a match, but he wouldn't it, he wouldn't be such a threat as he is right now. Like almost beating him here in the U.S. Open and actually beating him at the Olympics. Um, it, you know, it could speak to the fact that these guys, Novak and Roger and all them, they're getting older, sure, but also the game has has definitely changed. Uh, whether it's better or worse, it, it just is what it is. Um, I'm going to wrap things up. Oh yeah, back to that finishing that statement about Zverev. Just a couple years ago, he had no serve, and his game was under you know construction, and he was just not looking so good. And the commentators even mentioned that. So I'm thinking, okay, so you guys have, are telling me he's done a complete 360 and is now you know about to win all the Grand Slams and everything. I don't think so. I wouldn't have bet on him, and certainly his you know he he rode the wave of confidence. I'll give him that. But I just don't see it myself as, as someone who's been watching them. But to wrap things off, because I know some people will agree, some people will disagree. I think that Novak will win at least one Grand Slam next year. I think Rafa's going to come back, excuse me, strong. I hope Roger comes back strong. Just my, my thoughts going forward. Um, and it's going to be an interesting year next year, for sure. Because we just don't know how many more years we have left with these guys, especially Roger. Um, after all these knee surgeries, so it's possible next year is his last year. Same thing for Rafa, although I give it to Rafa. I think he's going to be in a little bit better of shape. Um, I think he'll have the next year and one more year maybe, but I think he's going to make a strong push, of course, for the French Open. Um, and that's really his best chance for a grand, grand Slam. He may give a push on the grass court and maybe the hard courts also, like one or the other, but I don't foresee him. I foresee him maybe having a year kind of like this year where he may miss out on a Grand Slam or something like that. But Novak, I think, will be around. I just, for me, it's mostly mental for Novak. Like, 
him not showing up to this U.S. Open final match, it's all mental. I mean, if he played his physical, like, on-court style of tennis, that is his actual best tennis, which in my opinion he has not played in a long time, he would be able to beat these guys. He would, he would, uh, the confidence alone, because he has the, 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 the game, of course, and, and he is Novak Djokovic, who has achieved all these accomplishments, but... To me, that match, the U.S. Open final, did not look like he believed he was going to win. It did not look like he showed up. He has not played any of his best tennis in a long time, if you ask me. Um, he does it periodically, and against certain opponents, sure. And I, a big point that I wanted to make, and I wanted to do a separate video on it, but if you're still watching up to this point, I'm going to be leaving it right here, is that I think that for Roger, uh, Rafa, and Novak to play each other, brings the best out of them which then instills that confidence in them to be able to just destroy everyone else but because they haven't played each other in so long now it's really just a matter of getting used to these newer guys which is the hard part it would it's going to be a struggle for Rafa and Roger also like how Roger has had losses in the past and how Rafa struggled against Berrettini, Fognini and um, Medvedev in 2019 at the US Open these guys you know getting older Plus, having to play these younger and newer guys while not playing each other is different. And so, for Novak, I think that that's a big part of it right now is he's not challenged enough, almost to a sense. Because if you ask me, he's just getting by. You know, like the Australian Open, some of these tournaments and whatnot, the French Open, you know, in Wimbledon, I've made videos on all this stuff. You know, or I've titled the last couple videos where he's won these last few Grand Slams. Novak won XYZ Grand Slam. Now what? You know, it's almost like it was just expected to happen. He just does enough to win. He he just hasn't played sharp tennis. It's sharp tennis, but it's not like 2011 or anything like that. You don't you start, you don't even feel the emotion through his game if you're watching him on the court. It's just sort of like rinse and repeat. Like he's a robot. How some people describe it. And I, I'm not I'm not a, the biggest fan of it. I miss his younger days and everything like that. And that's just my thoughts. But um, certainly the next gen aren't going anywhere because they're younger and everything like that. So Zverev, Sissipas, Medvedev, these guys are going to be a challenge next year. And I just think it's going to make for an interesting year. We may have a couple new Grand Slam winners, just like Medvedev winning this U.S. Open. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's, not, it's almost something not for me to really watch because I'm not really I don't really care for it all that much but it's good it's it's what's going to happen and it's good for the sport the sport is going to continue of course after these top three guys retire and um it'll be interesting to hear everyone else's perspective if you're watching my videos I would appreciate if you want to give your perspective um to I would challenge you to give your perspective on it I love listening to I can't think of Serena's coach but he did an interview with my favorite business person for those that don't know I do business stuff also Gary Vaynerchuk they had a video together I'm gonna put that down in the description because I think that that was a great video I continue I've watched it twice over now and uh, it's a long video like 50 minutes but tennis is at an interesting point for the guy side even more interesting for the ladies side I mean at this point Serena Williams is not gonna win another Grand Slam will she even return I don't know will Naomi Osaka bounce back I don't know is she even good enough to keep up with any of these other girls like actually legitimately I don't know. I just hope she's doing okay. I don't know if this mental health thing is a real thing, but certainly the media and everyone else is just not helping her. That's just my initial take on the ladies' side, but I'm going to do a separate video, which I'm going to film right now for the ladies' side. And um, if you watched all the way up to this point, let me know down in the comments below. I appreciate you guys, all the support. I did see my comment from my guy Reginald on the last video. I haven't responded just yet at the time of filming this video, but I will respond. And, um, I appreciate you guys. Let's keep it going. Um, the views on the videos haven't been as high. Of course, I expected that as I'm experimenting with the channel, but I'm going to continue making these videos because I'm just enjoying it. And um, yeah, man, I just, as a Novak fan who never wanted to see it go away, um, I just think that is interesting because, you know, it doesn't matter how you want to look at things, but this next gen certainly. There's there's a lot of like thoughts I could give a lot a lot that I have in my perspective. So future videos, stay tuned, subscribe, more videos coming. Thank you guys for watching. See you soon.